Is this all we're expecting tonight? No, I think Liz is coming and I know Cedric is in practice until seven. I know he had an appointment today to be sworn in. So hopefully he will um, attend the meeting tonight. And um, we have someone in the audience, Lauren Miss, Lauren Mills. And so once we get the meeting started, you probably want to wait a few minutes and then we can, if she would like to speak during public comment, we'll give her that opportunity. Yeah. I do know that Geise texted or emailed and said that she will not be able to attend. Yeah, she emailed you. Yeah. She said she would not. Mm -hmm. Hi, Liz. Hello, Miss. Hey, good. Hello, Stadonio. How are you? <laughs> Uh, could be better. Could be worse. Yeah. Don't don't, don't use my it. don't use my legal name. The CIA will come after me. I said. <laughs> Hello, Erica. God. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> ben like that. I'm Ben. <laughs> Me using legal name. Man, double O. It's a double O like. Yeah. Gotta, gotta keep it undercover, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh boy. All right, so should we get started? Yeah, if you right, want to so, start the meeting. Yeah, let's bring this uh, meeting to order. And, um, you know, as you guys know, um, our chair is uh, not able to be with us tonight. So I'll be doing uh, the chair duties. Uh, however, I have to leave at about 6.55 because I'm also part of the housing trust and I have to be in that meeting because we are voting on some stuff tonight that I need to be in there. And I would ask that uh, somebody would volunteer to take over chair duties um, after I leave. So do we have any volunteers to take over chair duties? I think that just means that you kind of follow and guide the agenda and then yep. you end the, the and meeting. You end the meeting then at that so. point. Okay, so um, any announcements? you know, um, that people want to make. Do we have a, a chair who's going to take over after you? I can't do it because I'm taking notes. Yeah, if we don't, then we'll have to end the meeting at that time. Trying so, to find the agenda, but I'll do it if I find it. <laughs> okay. It was, um, we can also pull the agenda up, right? Yeah. Does somebody have it? Yeah. You, I don't have it on, I have it on my phone, but I don't have it on the, on the thing, so. I'm gonna grab I it. it. Yep, I have it. You have it? Yeah. Okay. So, we do so yeah, so let's, uh, any announcements to make? From, uh, the commissioners, anybody has any announcements? Going once, going twice. All right, so let's uh, review the agenda, see if we have any additions to the agenda. So right after, you know, uh, we right after we'll approve the, the meetings and the um, approval of the minutes. And after that, we'll have some uh, public comments. If we have anyone who is uh, in our, um, what's the name of it? In the attendee waiting to to have some comments, we can have somebody do that. That will last about 15 minutes if you have any public comments. And then we will go into HR Commission reports and everyone who's been doing some stuff out there, please report. I know I'll have a few things to report on. And then um, number three, and we'll talk because of certain things we might get to this or not, the role of the commissioner, the chair and town, town staff liaison selection for 2020-21 of chair and vice chair, that most likely we're gonna table it until the November 19th meeting, okay? Um, so that we can have a fuller and more robust discussion on that on that topic. And then started the planning on conversations and uh, on Human Rights Commission involvement in recognition of the quality of black lives in the COVID, COVID pandemic and the town community safety committee and I'll do um, I'll do some a little bit of report because I'm on that one, and then any other types of um, upcoming events, the fall events that 
we may have talked about or thought about, um, we can talk about those things. And then anything else that was not anticipated in the last 48 hours that um, people may want to put in, uh, in the agenda minutes, we can discuss those. Okay, we good? Um, all right, so let's go into the approval of, um, of the minutes. Uh, those minutes were sent. I was not in the last uh, in the last meeting, so I will defer to folks who were there to uh, check the accuracy of the meeting minutes, and then we can have a motion to just accept the minute minutes as is or with corrections. So, if you've, everyone has checked the minute minute meetings, we can proceed to accept them. Somebody create a motion, we'll accept them, or if there is any corrections. Please, um, please state so as of this time. All right, so any corrections? Liz, I see your hands up. Do you want to say something? No, or? I was trying to figure out if I was on mute or not. Oh, okay. Nope, you're on. <laughs> so, all right, so no corrections. All right, so anybody want to make a motion to approve the meetings for September, meeting minutes for September? Uh, I move to approve the meeting's minutes for September. Okay, without corrections and second. 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 Okay, all in favor, say aye. Aye. Who, I'll raise uh, your hand. I'm sorry, who was that who seconded? I couldn't tell. Liz Haygood. Liz, Liz Haygood. Okay. All in favor, aye. 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 Okay. For ayes, I'll abstain because I was in the last meeting, so meeting minutes approved. And we'll go from there. All right, so let's um, look at public comments. I think we may have somebody in the public who is. We do have one attendee in our list from the public, uh, Lauren Mills. I don't know if Lauren has something to say. If Lauren has something to say. Yep, the hands are up. So let's have uh, give Lauren a chance to um, to have a comment. But do you want me to pull her in as a panelist? Um, yeah, just to the, to the comments and then we'll just see what comments she has and then we will um, put her back in the, in the attendee. Yeah. Six, seven. Hello, Lauren. This is the uh, time for public comments. If you have some co public comments, please, uh, please state yes. your comments. Yes, yeah, sure. Hi. Good evening. Um, I would just um, like to address the Human Rights Commission on the issue of recognizing that um, there are uh, vulnerable communities, most, of, most often of color, and in housing complexes in Amherst who um, still are trying to find a clear way of working with the different agencies, such as the police department, um, the the town and um, the you know different um, branches such as um, the Human Rights Commission to make sure that their concerns, um, their complaints, um, their input and their relations around police and, um, uh, perceived abuses, also. Um, racial inequalities are are you know addressed, making sure that those 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 concerns are addressed in a um, in a complete way. Um, and as a resident, it has been unclear as to how those things are being addressed with um, the new initiatives. As I know of, are the hotline. Um, also, I know as you're agenda is going to discuss the um, community safety working group. Um, there has also been information about health ambassadors and all these new initiatives, which are to improve um, on our community safety. Um, the fact that there needs to be alternative methods and other tools that, you know, the police are using and that are you know, part of the community's way of ensuring their um, health and well-being. I just want to 
you know, reiterate that as a resident and as I'm sure other residents feel that there needs to be a, um, a clear way to address the concerns. And so I, you know, just wanted to attend the meeting to make sure that that was, you know, a clear, a clear concern that the, the commission knows about. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. And, um, you know, definitely taking, um, taking notes and this, uh, uh, new is taking notes and we will bring those forth, not only for, you know, for discussion within the, uh, the commission, but we also will make sure that we'll bring it to the other authorities. And as you said, there is a working group, a safety working group that, um, that will be coming, um, forth with a, with a new, group of people who will be looking at a lot of the issues that you have uh, stated in, uh, in your comments. Okay, so truly appreciate you coming in and, and uh, putting your views out there. Okay, thank you. Appreciate you. No, oh, no, just saying hi, bye. <laughs> oh, I'm saying hi, okay. All right. Thank you. So Jennifer, can you put it back on the uh, attendee? Group? Yes. Okay, great. All right, so this is the time now for us to, uh, we don't have any, any more people in the public session, right? At least not that I can see. There was only one person, there was Miss Mills, and that's it. Okay, so, all right. Human Rights Commission member reports. Let's report on things that you're working on, things that were discussed last time. Some, some, I know some members are working on different pieces. Um, I can start. And as most of you guys know, I am part of the Housing Trust. And I think this was stated last, last time that there is a second round of um, the um, rent assistance and the application is, is out there. So I'd encourage folks to encourage people who they know are in um, some dire economic needs and uh, they have some rents who, some rent that is uh, behind for them to apply for the grant um, because it's, it's important in these times as we know that there's lots of folks who um, unfortunately um, due to some ineptitude from our government are not getting some additional um, money that they used to get, um, which was the $600. And that has had a severe impact in many members of our community. So if you can encourage as many people, as we know that need um, some help with their grant, or with their grant, with their rent, with a grant, then uh, they should definitely apply for, for the grant, okay? The second is I am part of the group who will be ch ch uh, choosing the members for the safety uh, working group. And um, yesterday we had our first meeting with the, the town, um, the town manager, and um, we came up with ways to look at, you know, uh, who we're going to interview, questions to, for the interviewees, how the interviews are going to be conducted. And I think most of you guys know that uh, six of the nine members are going to be people of uh, BIPOC uh, descendant and or from underserved communities, all right? Um, and we will be looking at all of the, all of the, uh, uh, the different um, identities and intersectionalities within the group and come, um, and come up hopefully with a group that is re representative of our town and um, that can then start working on a lot of the issues, but this is more focused on policing in our town, okay? Um, the idea is to try to interview, um, if not all, most of the people who um, applied. There is an application process that they have to go. It's a community, help me with that form that they have to fill out, Jennifer. It's a community- Activity form. A community activity form. So if you know mm -hmm. of anyone who's interested in being part of this, of this group, have them fill it out. As of yesterday, there was 12 candidates and um, except for we did figure out a few um, 
qualifiers that that we want in there and there's certain things that would probably disqualify people from participating in this group and all of that was uh, decided yesterday but we had 12 people and we're hoping to have these interviews done probably within the next two weeks right we know that people's schedules are um, pretty much uh, full at this point with lots of folks in in that group being either administrators and you know community activists and professors and other types of, of uh, engagement that they're in. So when we do understand that it's, it's uh, people's schedules are full. Um, so, but we still try to, going to try to get this done within the next two weeks and, and have this group um, ready for the council to approve and then start doing, doing the work. Okay. So that's, that's my two areas that I've, I'm connected with that I'm reporting on. Anybody else? Um, I just want to piggyback a little bit on Sid's first announcement about housing assistance. I do know that it is on the um, school website Correct. so that people in our school communities can apply and it gives them information there. So just so that your committee knows that, that the school is also supporting and um, trying to help with that whole entity of a rental assistance for some of our um, uh, some of our you know families that may need some support. And can I just triple back on that? So we, uh, the community participation officers and the town manager, have been doing visiting with the mobile market um, over on at Fort River and on East Hadley Road. And one of the employees from the mobile market gave us some incredible feedback about how the first round of these funds were being issued and how difficult it was so that we ended up putting a process in place and contracting or collaborating with, a, with um, uh, not family center, but uh, Amherst, oh, what is it? It's not Amherst Family Center, but it's Amherst Family Outreach. Mm, okay. And um, from there, we were able to give them under COVID, COVID funds to help support staff. And they actually hired folks from the community that other community members will know so that it's making the process easier <laughs> for everyone. Um, so that was pretty good. Question. You said that there were mm -hmm. some difficulties in the first round. Do you know if that feedback was passed on to the housing trust? Because the housing trust is... I part do of believe the that John is aware of the, the difficulties that happened there. Okay. Yeah, yeah because yeah. we definitely want to take that into, into account to make sure that in the second round, you know, because I'm going to do that meeting right after this, um, making sure that the, the second round that you know, the community members do not encounter the same type of difficulties that they encountered on the first one, so. Yep, no, I mean, most of it was about the application, I think, but I, and I don't know um, how much that could change because the application is a federal form. But I think that having somebody help guide you through that application Correct. process is easier than just being overwhelmed about rental and other financial issues and food insecurity and trying to fill out like a multi-page form and get all the documentation, so. Correct, yeah, okay. Because mm -hmm. I know we discussed all of that in figuring out the ways of having, you know, help, including translators and you know, people that speak other language to, to help with that process, because definitely can be convoluted, you know, and the simpler we can make it, um, the better off we are. So also the mobile market is on its way it's entering the last month of its of the season and I just would like to let everybody know that it's incredible so you, it's like affordable fruits and veg organic fruits and vegetables that are sold um, and everybody's eligible and so they have these two spots three one is at butternut farms one is at Fort River on Thursdays from 3 to 5 30 um, and the other one is Saturdays from 11.30 to 1.30 on East Hadley Road at the bus stop. So mm -hmm. typically um, myself or Angela and the town manager will be out there as well, a little bit behind them, just doing some community outreach and talking with folks. Mm -hmm. 
And any time, you know, if you guys need any any help with that, just I'm offering myself. I'm not offering, you know, the, yep. what's the commission. <laughs> if there's, there's, if anything that I can do to engage, I would more than like to do that. Yeah, okay. that would be great. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, it just took the words right out of my mouth. Mm -hmm. than I did. So mm -hmm. just reach out if you need anything. Yeah. So we, the community participation officers, we've also been going to the survival center. And so this month we're going to go to the survival center when Jen Brown goes, who's the acting health director and town nurse um, while she's distributing flu vaccines. So it, we'll all be there um, on the 27th for outreach. Thank you. Great information. Thank you. Any uh, any other uh, commission member reports? Anybody else? Yep, Ben. Yep, just plug in school equity task force again. We have a meeting next Wednesday. I can send anyone the link that that might need that or might be interested. In hey Ben, you want to send me that link? Gotcha. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> yeah, that would be good. Be good. <laughs> and I, how is that coming along, Ben? Uh, it's a work in progress. It's, yeah. we're, we're, we're progress being the key word. We're, we're making progress that we that hasn't necessarily been made for a while. So Good. it's slow, but it's going. But, yeah, I mean, as long as, as like we say in, in social, just as long as there's you know you guys are working on some action steps and you see some some outcomes, you know that's that's what matters. Because sometimes this work is tedious and it takes a while, but you yeah. know. It's as long as we, you know that there's going to be some some good stuff coming out of it, you know it's it's good. Any other reports from my commissioners, Erica, Liz, Deb? Any you guys have anything else to add? Oh, all right. So, like I said, um, the uh, the role of the commissioners and staff is on the selection of the chair. We will table that for our November 19th meeting. Okay, so um, so we'll go into the planning process. And what I'm going to do, however, instead of, instead of just starting this conversation and I'll have to leave because I'll have to leave in literally two minutes, um, I will just, you know, just give the mantle to, to Ben to uh, continue chair, chairing the, uh, the commission meeting and you can start that conversation and uh, what I'll do is at some point I'll watch the, the end of the, of the meeting and we'll go from there, okay? Because that way I can exit right now. So thank you everyone. And I hope everyone has a good night and we'll see you on the 19th. So right. the mental Stay is safe, you, yours. you too. All right, thank you. Cheers, thanks. All right, so the planning of conversations and Human Rights Commission involvement in recognition of the equality of Black Lives and the COVID pandemic, and then Town Community Safety Committee. So, um, do you want to give me some background there, Jen? <laughs> or give us some background? I feel like you're on mute and talking to She's us. But on not. mute. Right, because I was explaining dinner process to a kid. Oh, no. <laughs> um, I'm just trying to pull up the agenda now, mm -hmm. and because I'm on my phone. Um, so I can already know that I can speak on. So typically, the Human Rights Commission supports the different proclamations that are requested or we put in for the different proclamations for the town council to approve, along with like a flag raising ceremony of the different heritages, different heritages. And so um, right now I speak, spoke with Martha and she, they weren't able to, we weren't able to communicate for them to do something for the Hispanic or Latino heritage month. And so November is also, um, Puerto Rican History Month specifically, but there's uh, some type of issue with the 
the way that the government on the 19th of November and it's not really their independence. So it's similar to like our a false independence given. And so they don't wish to celebrate it. celebrate it this year. That would help too if my mic was down. And um, so there's that. We I sent everybody the Human Rights Day proclamation, correct? To take a look at. So typically what we do for Human Rights Day is we meet on the town common. Um, a proclamation is done by the town council. And then we read the declaration, which is about four or five pages, but there's usually a circle of people and we have little candle lights. So in theory, we can still go ahead and move forward with that as it's an outdoor, we never have more than 25 people. And, um, but it's, it's just a good celebration or we could do it via do, Isaiah, the dog is on trying to get the food on the counter. Um, we could also do it via Zoom and have it posted on Amherst Media or something like that as well. So the choices are up to you guys on how you would like to proceed with that if you don't want to do it live and in person. That's it's also very December. cold in December. Right. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> so, so with heat sounds that, that gets my vote but I yeah so i'm i we just have to put in the the council has changed the way that they um approve proclamations so i need to submit it like as soon as possible um so that we can have it approved for the december 10th date perfect i just being zoom bombed here yeah <laughs> so um there is that and then so i was thinking like last year we we celebrated kwanzaa and perhaps we could do something similar this year but just we would be doing it virtually or at least some significant or at least put up the different kwanzaa meet, meetings the days of kwanzaa on our on our web page or or somehow to prom to keep promoting stuff like I feel like we don't want to stop completely promoting these things. I was in Worcester yesterday meeting um, with their urban planner and they are still doing everything. I mean their their offices are open only to by appointment, but they are you know still doing their proclamations and still doing their initiatives, and so that we should still continue to. Right, so that we don't lose that momentum um, or as much as we can. So after Human Rights Day, there's not another proclamation typically until January for M. Martin Luther King's birthday, January 15th, correct? So I would, I would say that we're, if we feel we can do it safely outside, um, insisting on masks that we should go forward with in person to the extent that we feel we can do it safely because there's so much isolation right now and I so I just think it would be meaningful you know to bring people together as opposed to online many of us are spending huge chunks of time online <laughs> mm -hmm. so. so um we can talk about it more at the November Meeting the 19th, I think that would give us, if I started advertising on the 20th for the event, however we're going to do it, that would be fine. I just, um, I need you guys to vote on the proclamation so I can move that forward. So does anybody want to make a motion? I, I motion. would just, yeah. Go ahead. We can go through. Go ahead. <laughs> Sorry. Somebody's <laughs> got to second it. Anyone seconding? Any second? So show, I guess, roll call vote? No, we don't do that here, right? Just show of hands, we get a vote. All right. You gotta show your hand, Erica. Oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> sorry. sorry, here, hi. Or not. <laughs> Zero. So, yeah, so. Um, yeah. Hey, Petua. Yeah, hi, Petua. We can, uh, um, ugh, my dog is like attacking me. So. I don't know what other act things that are happening. Most places have kind of put a halt to those things, but I think that we can move forward with proclamations that we typically do if that works for the group. And can I just piggyback on what Deborah said? Is it Deborah or Deborah? 
It's it's Deb actually. My full okay. name is my full name is Deborah, but I don't know how to switch it. <laughs> <laughs> It's Deb. So I just want to piggyback on what Deb said. And I have to say this with everybody knowing that I do not like being cold at all. Okay. But I also think that um, it was some meaning into her saying, we've been on screen so much. If we can figure out a safe way to gather for a few minutes to do what we normally do, um, I think that it would be beneficial to not only us, as a committee, but the town in general. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Works. Yep. Okay. Perfect. So the um, town. Are there any updates on the town community safety meeting uh, committee that that uh, Sid didn't talk about? Yep. So. As he's, so they haven't formed the committee. We just created the interview committee, right? Because there was a lot of pressure from residents that, you know, they didn't necessarily want or feel like trust for the town manager to appoint these individuals and they wanted more of a general consensus. So we're having um, Amherst residents sit on the committee and for an interview process. And so, like Sid said, there's about 12. We have a list of about, I would say, close to 100 people who we are trying to ask to be involved in different things at different times. Um, and so Paula has sent out a blast email to all of those individuals. I will be the staff liaison for the community safety working group. Um, and that, you know, that's all we really have right now is that they'll be interviewing shortly. Unless somebody had, you know, more questions about in regards to their mission or what exactly that there is they're going to be doing. Anyone? Any questions from anyone? Um, well, I would love to have more of that filled in if you have those details. So this committee is really to help the police find either alternative ways, whether it's them or they hire someone else, as people might know. So we had been advertising, we had two police positions that were available. And so we have not filled those two positions in the thought that we might hire a social worker of some sort or a counselor to come in and work with the police department for some of those calls that they get that don't necessarily require police um, the police, you know, that are more mental health based or domestic, some of the, no, I don't want to say domestic violence, but that are more mental health based or dealing with the homeless. So it is to try, and then it's also to try and, and, and build that gap between the police and the community. Um, so different initiatives for the police and, and the community. Right. I think as the group gets together, they'll define it a little more. It's pretty broad right now. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So then the uh, conversations and human rights commission involvement in recognition of the equality of black lives in the COVID pandemic. How does that, what, what was the, the motivation be behind that being on the agenda? Is there a comma in between those two or is it just all one thing? I'm sorry, I still don't have the agenda in front of me. Um, it was like all one. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, so I think that overall, uh, the folks who are more vulnerable are have a, a different or having more difficulties with the COVID, right? So it's been on a national level known that the BIPOC community is being affected by COVID in a different manner than um, people of non-BIPOC communities. So I guess we could say one is like, is there a way for us to support that effort in making sure that that people's needs are being met um, on a local and national level? And then perhaps, um, yeah, we should be checking in with our BIPOC community and, and trying to minimize that marginalization there. Are there any thoughts on like what we can do as a commission to kind of support our, our BIPOC community? 
in terms of the, the whole COVID and, and other health related issues? Like, does anyone have any ideas or? I mean, some of it could be general education, yeah. right? In, in or my, making sure that folks have access or know yeah. how to connect with resources and all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Erica. No, it's okay. I, I it, this is hitting a little cl close to work right now, related to some of the students I'm working with. So I'm intrigued. <laughs> of any ideas on how you can we can support the community better. Yep. So I'm at, I'm at a roadblock. Um, so I know like when we've been, so one of the things that has been really, really hard for us as community participation officers lately is just trying to engage with the community because it's everybody's, you know, typically I would have suggested that we just throw a really big barbecue at like certain different <laughs> complexes and have LSSE come and bring all the sports stuff and maybe the fire department and, and just have like this really good, nice block party in each different little neighborhood. But we can't do that. So all we've been able to really do right now is um, try and and kind of connect or piggyback off of existing events that are going on in town, for instance, the survival center or the mobile market, where some of those folks we would often see there. Um, Otherwise, I it's just it's just really hard right now. I know that we, um, I did make a connection with the Chinese community, like I kind of found an ambassador for the Chinese community, and so you know, there's not much that can happen right there right now. Um, so we the best I could do was come up with a flyer that he sent out to all of the folks that he knew that just had all of the different resources available and he translated it into Mandarin as well. Well, yeah, that was gonna be my question that I had is if we have flyers with resources for like housing assistance, food assistance, um, mm -hmm. medical assistance, if we have those type of flyers, if we can do like a mailing or if we could do, um, go out and like, do outreach within the apartment complexes. Yep, so one of the things that I find um, is also too, and maybe because you guys are Human Rights Commission members as opposed to town government employees, is that there's like a distrust, right? And so you have to be very careful, at least I feel like we have to be very careful on how we infringe on that. So when I, when we decided to go with the mobile markets, we had a conversation with the managers at the mobile market, like, how would you feel if we came? And we literally sit away from them. And then we both, like the mobile market employees say, oh, you should go stop over at the, at the table over there. And then we tell people to go over to the mobile market. But we're also giving out free masks and stuff like that. So um, it gets people a little bit more engaged than we have. Um, so you, it just, you just have to kind of be delicate of the fact that sometimes when you say like you're from the town, it puts people on edge. Um, and then, so there's still the survey. I don't know if we want to go through with the survey or not. <laughs> Why are you rolling your eyes? Are you talking to me? Yeah. <laughs> I'm feeling some type of way about surveys right now. Um, I feel like there have been so many surveys that have been sent out and my fear is that a lot of these surveys are not going to our low income families mm -hmm. because of accessibility to computers, to internet and just accessibility we'll just leave mm -hmm. it as accessibility accessibility and i feel like the best ways to communicate to some of these families is going and being personable and being like hey and showing up because mm -hmm. i would i as a low-income person would rather somebody show up 
and show me that they're willing to take the steps as opposed to getting another survey in my mailbox. Right. So um, I think that the, the distribution of the survey would have been an all hands on deck type of distribution because you're absolutely right. And we cannot connect with that population that is mostly affected by all of the things that are on the survey via just putting it on the website, right? Like that's not accessible people like, and it's, I just remember being when I was just a resident and not an employee of the town. I would never look to go to the town website to look for anything. Like, what well, I'm going to go pay my excise yeah, no. tax in the building, and that's about it, right? So I do that's understand I that. <laughs> and then that is why it would have been had to be more hands on deck. And even still, it's it's the fact of approaching individuals necessarily. Right, so everything has to be kind of done delicately. So there's also the thought of finding um, ambassadors for the different complexes, right? And so you kind of have that ambassador person that you can give the surveys to and she can help the folks or you know, maybe you could pair with an ambassador at Colonial and Petro could um, you know, work with an, an ambassador from South Point and Deb could do that little complex that nobody ever talks about behind the Cumbies in North Amherst, right? Like we could, <laughs> we could kind of like work it out. Um, so it's, you know, we just really have to kind of be mindful and, and think about the different ways that we can approach it. Because honestly too, like perhaps if you are um, an like an illegal immigrant here and somebody comes approaching you with the survey, you're going to be like, uh, well, and that's why, that's why if we go out and do it, we need to find, I think that with who we are as a commission, as a commission, we have enough connections within the community that we know who to, who we can approach to kind of be that liaison between each community. Right. So you we know, can, yep, go ahead. That sums it up. I'm sorry, I just got distracted by the dog. We can um, definitely work on ambassadors if everybody has a, like, knows somebody in, in a different community that they think might be, um, or who they feel like is kind of a leader because all complexes kind of have that one person that's a little bit of a leader there. So we could, you know, we could do it that way. I mean, there's, the challenge with COVID is just, it's such a challenge. Everything's such a challenge. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and then maybe we could give them a little stipend or like a gift card to Big Y for their work and their effort, right? Because we don't want to um, just keep asking from people and not being able to compensate them. So do we want to come up with like a plan for that or? I think we should, right? Because otherwise it'll take next month before anything happens. We can kind of start taking steps now. Like, are we going to like carve out the town, like figure out, start off doing that, getting our liaisons together, that kind of thing? Yeah. I mean, um, Liz and Petua, Ben and Deb and Erica, do you have anybody an idea in the different complexes? I, I know a, a couple of folks over in South Point, the Boulders area that could do that. I think, um, I don't know, like I could do, like I know a lot of people in like, like Pomeroy Lane too, and also the like, Butternut Farms, like are in that area, like I know, mm -hmm. I know a lot of people there, but I also think that we could possibly, like at least for me, because I'm, I'm in school, so like there's clubs in the high school, and they're also like LSSD and other connections, so if we want to, because I know like a lot of young people want to be involved and want to like put them, like put themselves out there and wait, well, like with permission with it from their parents, but like they want to put themselves out there and like make sure that like they feel like they're making change too. So if we, I think it's really important that we include young people too in this and maybe we can work with like clubs or like, I don't know if we're doing presidents for our like grades or stuff, but maybe they can be like the school ambassadors to help um, bring like momentum so that we, all, so they, so that the young people can also be engaged with the government as well. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to take that piece on since you're our, our high school yeah. rep? Yeah, I can do that. <laughs> Great. And so um, are you, and it actually you're absolutely a hundred percent right because you know, a lot of times it is our young black boys 
and um, Latinx boys who are in Cambodia and who are, are being, that are affected by the different things that happen mm -hmm. that are a more of a negative. I don't even, I'm trying to be very careful. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, Erica, you got somebody in mind for over there? You want to do it yourself or what? You got to hit rolling green too. I have to unmute. I can't think of any. Um, I don't mind doing it here. That's I'm talking really loud. I don't mind doing it here. I can't think of anybody that I don't know anybody that lives in Rolling Green anymore. Mm -hmm. everybody, everybody that I know. Sharon everybody. Hazard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that's right. I forgot Sharon was there. <laughs> and yep. the joiners. Mary yep. Joyner still lives there. Oh, and, okay. And well, Martin okay. knows there too. So there's a couple of people. Does somebody want to reach out to them? Liz, you want to reach out to them? I'll reach out to Sharon. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I was thinking uh, Lisa Wentworth still lives there too. Uh, Does Tony? No, she moved. She, Tony, um, yeah, she's not there anymore. And Tamisha's not there anymore either. Okay. Okay. And um, so I know that um, Johanny in South Point, I don't know if anybody knows Johanny, but she's heavily involved and she's very big on community participation. So um, I would check in with, I will check in with her to see if she can kind of um, do the South Point Boulders Mill Valley area um and that area is so big it would probably be worth having more than one ambassador out there so if anybody else has any other names for that area ben harrington ben hello <laughs> <laughs> i suppose i could do some assisting yeah. and um i actually have so I know that Say How has been like the ambassador, the Cambodian ambassador for like everything and for a very long time. Um, but I actually just met up with Say, Safe, Seth, Seth, who lives down the street here um, off of West Street. And so he's willing and is excited about being coming involved. And so maybe we could um, utilize him as the... Uh, Cambodian ambassador because again that is a population that we have very little um, connection with and we don't really ever hear from that community and um, you know they've got like three four generations over there so now, is there anybody uh, like Village Park in Olympia oh well, I've got somebody for Olympia and I have someone for Village Park too I think right because um coach um antonio antonio hey, but i was Anto thinking his wife um charlene charlene mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so there still lives that i have somebody who might be able to do it that lives behind that unspoken apartment complex behind the cumbies in north amherst mark keenan go fill your sours oh wait did i say you have some names <laughs> Oh, does Jenny live, live back there? Yes. Mm -hmm. And she's retired now, so she might have some time. I know, because every time I would ask her for stuff, she'd be like, I'm just too busy. Uh huh. Yep. Yep. Um, Ty's, Ty's over here laughing at you guys. <laughs> see? Hi, Ty. Um, Ty's been laughing at me for a very long time, and I don't care, okay? <laughs> Is that all of the complexes? Deb, Puffton, do you presidential Puffton? Yeah. Oh, uh, did we hit um, North Village? What is going on with North Village? I, you know, there was a lot going on about them having to leave, um, oh, and that they were right. redoing the apartments over there. So, are are they still living over there? Oh, I don't know. There's definitely still families over there because, like, for transportation, we have we have uh, bus pickups at North Village. So, okay, ben, you're a good resource. I try. <laughs> <laughs> so, Deb, we need to be able to task you with something, right? I know. I feel like I'm going to be fairly useless. Like, if um, 
if we had to work to get people from like the Jewish community to fill out the survey, I probably would be useful. Um, but I still think that that's a fantastic idea. Yeah, I mean, I right? can be a liaison to the Jewish community of Amherst. Um, and the JCA is doing, they are very heavily involved with the equity task forces that are working yeah. through town. Um, and they're very invested in that work. So that is, you yeah. know, every group needs, we all need to work together. Yeah. So that works. And there's a small group of people from the yoga center, which will be closing. Um, but there are a few people that are continuing to meet um, to push for reparations in the town. And they are connected to a lot of people. So I can definitely encourage them to encourage others to fill out the survey. Yeah. I'm um, so... I think right now we should connect with our ambassadors and um, once every, once we have a good list of ambassadors and it seems like we have all the areas covered. Um, and in the meantime, we can work on the survey. So Liz and Erica, you guys are probably and Cedric are the only ones that didn't receive a copy of the survey yet. And so I will, I want to make some change. I keep saying I'm going to make changes to it because I think things like transportation and food insecurity really need to be on there. Um, just not just like, have you had, what were your experiences like, or that you've seen about, you know, people going to the different town entities. So Jennifer, um, did you send that out? I don't remember receiving that. Oh yeah. You commented on it. <laughs> 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 oh my god well that was probably last week and i mean like how can i possibly remember what happened last week, <laughs> last week um, you yesterday. and petula and guysy were exactly. the only ones that gave oh, me feedback oh god okay right that was so last much month. appreciated oh my god um okay. but i can send that out and people if they reply just solely That's to me with their um their input, then I can make changes. What we can't do is send everything to every to all of us because then that makes it a quorum and then we're in violation. So there's like these little tricky things about being uh, on a board or committee from the town. So if I typically if I send you stuff out, I'm going to ask you just to reply solely to me. Fair enough. All right, so that, that's the plan for, we'll have all that. So you'll send that out tomorrow? I mean, I can send an email out and I'll put a time deadline on it because what we're notorious for is saying that we're going to do something and then it never gets done, right? right. And so we, um, and the community is really feeling that way as well, like the feedback that I've heard from some community members, right? So we want to stop that because we want to be as proactive and supportive to the community as we can possibly be. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll, uh, so we'll get so that. So I got to, I got to, oh, wait. Oh, no, go ahead. Um, can, when you send out the survey, can mm -hmm. you recap what we're doing? Like what you. Oh, what each person's doing? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, oh, no. That's going to be in our notes. That should be in our, um, um, That'll be in the minutes, and Deb yeah, is really okay. great at getting me the minutes the next day, so or the day after. So, <laughs> you so are. Deb, you're so good at it. Is that so, a plug for me to get them to you sooner? <laughs> <laughs> so this I is think, just like the fifth. I think that's what that was, because <laughs> you need them sooner. No, um, I mean I think I've got it right. Like so, Liz is going to connect with Sharon and some folks in the Rolling Green area. Erica's gonna connect or be the, lead, the ambassador over at Colonial. Ben is gonna assist in South Point. We're gonna also ask um, Yahani and I'm probably gonna try and ask one more person. It's just so big over there between Mill Valley, the Boulders and the Brook and New Hollister and South Point, right? So maybe we can find a, a couple more. And uh, Petra's got the Butternut Long Meadow Drive Pomeroy Lane area covered. Deb's got the uh, JCA community covered, right? So Petua, Monica lives in Butternut, so she would be somebody that could possibly help you because she knows a lot of people over there. And you know, um, the Correas are over there, Citalani and all of them. And mm -hmm. um, actually the woman who just spoke to us, oh, you weren't here. 
um what is her Lauren. name Lauren. 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 I think she lives I think she lives in Butternut too she yep. does yeah yeah so you have some resources over there okay yeah um, so quick question for the minutes, um, Jennifer. I did not make a note of who, which community each person is going to be approaching. Do you want that in the minutes? No, I mean, I've got it. It's fine. Okay. Yeah. I'll summarize it. We're good. Yeah. Yeah, I just um, that everyone knew who, wh where they were going. And I'll probably check in with Guy Z and Sid because, as we know, Sid is very well um, connected with the Cape Verdean pop the community and Gaizit yeah. just knows a just it's like a human resource herself. So you know, I'll check in with them and see if they can connect. And you know, Cedric is really good because he's got all the parents. Um, so I, I'll check in with them individually too. Cool. All right. So that's the plan. We'll have all that together for next meeting. Well, no, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna have already hopefully given out the survey to our ambassadors by the next meeting, hopefully. Yeah. Like so I would say like maybe a week, a week and a half before you to have connect with your ambassadors and then during that same time period we'll be working on the survey together, but sending it back individually, just as a reminder. And um that way it can go out as soon as possible. Right, we'll because partially the, wrap the next meeting then. Yeah, right. And then so, you know, the thing that about COVID right now is I don't feel like we've really gotten the repercussions fully from COVID and the means of people with food insecurities, people mm -hmm. um, without who are unemployed. I don't think we've really felt or dealt with that yet. And it's just on the way to come. So it would be great if we could are, be more proactive for when that happens. Absolutely. All right. So that wraps that. So then upcoming events, fall planning. Oh, did anyone have any more to add to the last? We're, we're good. We're, we're solid on that. I don't know if, if anyone wanted to punt. Yes, we're good. We're good. Okay. So then, um, yeah, up, upcoming events, fall planning. What do we I got? Mean, well, Let's, that was the whole. This is it, right? Well, no, but that was also the whole, like, uh, flag raising and proclamations and, and stuff like that, right? So that's typically what we do. Last year, I collaborated with local, with, with community members who celebrated Kwanzaa and just tried to make it more publicized, um, right? Because I've come to know that a lot of people have like, oh, I've heard of the name Kwanzaa or I've heard of Kwanzaa, but I don't know what it is, right? And so we just want to educate people a little bit, right? And so... We can talk about that at the November meeting, but I'm thinking we'll probably do something and try and link with Amherst Media. So I will talk to the Shabazzes and Laura Mills was the other person that I worked with in regards to that, so. So for Kwanzaa, as a um, advisor for POKU, and, which is People of Color United, by the way, it's a club at the high school and Petua is part of that club. And we do a Kwanzaa celebration every year we're not sure as of yet what's going to happen this year because of um, our pandemic, but it might be um, if we're going to do something for Amherst Media and want to explain the principles and, and all of that, it could be um, that some of our students also participate in that. And I will bring that up in our next meeting on Tuesday. So that next meeting is Tuesday. And then... Um... We will meet again November 19th. So that could give us enough time to kind of orchestrate that. Yeah. Right. And we can all kind of think, start thinking about creative ways to make that connection and to make it happen. And again, I'll talk to Dee Shabazz and uh, Mr. Shabazz and Lauren. Actually, I love, that. I, I love that idea about the, that the Human Rights Commission would collaborate with POKU. That's a wonderful idea. Get more young people, like, you know, just make those connections that's awesome mm -hmm. and all at the same time people who probably would never who watch amherst media will will see it like right and so we'll put it on the town website and we can actually have a live link from the human rights commission page i mean we can do and then petua oh right the the website or the facebook page right so things like that we really need to try and get out on our facebook page so that we can 
blast it. And um, I keep getting notices about people liking it, but I'm like, what is there to like? It's like really dated. So we should work on that. Yeah. I will connect with Petua to somehow work on that. And I didn't mean that in a bad way. Like it's dated. So people shouldn't like it, but it's dated, right? Like it's. I'm trying to look it up right now. <laughs> oh, I liked it. Okay. <laughs> I I it. <laughs> yeah, like sometimes I'm like, oh, I forget these meetings are recorded. Darn. <laughs> so, are there any topics? not reasonably foreseen by the chair in the last 48 hours. That's how it's worded, right? Not anticipated. Not anticipated. We, we were going to talk further about, um, you know, just educational events in the town right after picking up after that webinar. I was just in a two day Zoom training with um, Human and Common. Do you guys know this organization? They did a fabulous training on interrupting racism. Or I thought it was fabulous on interrupting racism with a, just a multi-pronged approach. Um, and it was just a really well thought out. Um, I mean, I don't, I don't know. We, I, it's probably not appropriate to be plugging any one agency, but I just thought that um, <clears throat> uh, they, they were very skillful at working with white allies blind spots. So I, I just, I want to, I, I don't want us to lose track of that idea of us promoting more educational opportunities for people to, <clears throat> to learn and grow and, um, you know, make the town a more <clears throat> welcoming and inclusive community. So do we want to start thinking about different workshops that we can um, promote? Right. I mean, I think part of the survey was to kind of ask what the community wants, but I think we can take that out and I think we can just show, have different workshops and then people will start to hear about them and sign up for them or not sign up for them. Right. Like, and we'll get a better gauge that way, you know. I like this idea. Buddy. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Thing about meeting at home, dogs, kids. That's why I, I banished my husband to the the store. Dogs, kids, husbands. So Buddy's like 115 pounds. There's not much I can do with him. He's just monstrous. And um, if I have a 5:30 meeting, I'm you're guaranteed to see me zoom bombed by everybody in my household because they're all like, "We've missed you all day." Right. <laughs> Um, you, you are right, though, and I had forgotten that that was in the survey was about educational opportunities. So it is true. We might want to just wait <clears throat> for the survey results. Well, I mean, I, we can talk about it and we can talk about it next month if you want to. Like, I'm more than willing to take that piece out of it, the survey, because it kind of directs the survey in a different to a different area versus I think that if we advertised for two weeks or three weeks that we were going to have a um a workshop on equity right that people would sign up we we have some come someone come facilitate it and you know we do it online and i think that the people would sign up so it's up to you guys well, maybe we can do like introductory kind of things because like people who don't know a lot about government and want to get engaged like they might not know anything about government so they could so maybe this can be an opportunity to like introduce how like your role in government even if you aren't like a human rights commissioner but like just a citizen like what you can mm -hmm. do and how you can be engaged that'd be a cool opportunity for all people okay yeah no nope. and so there's three community participation officers i'm just one of two of three so we can include them in it and then the and come up with a like a a full workshop of how to get involved and and you know people don't you're absolutely right like people outside of here don't really understand the processes that things go through or why it takes so long for everything to happen um so no oh, great 
Any other topics? Going once, going twice. So if somebody wanted to make a motion, that would be the end of our agenda right there. So <laughs> what at seven thirty-six? <laughs> Unless somebody, nothing to say. <laughs> unless somebody wanted to uh, elaborate on anything we've already discussed. Um, can I ask a question, which I kind of thought, it, I feel a little weird asking it. Um, well, whenever somebody says, can I ask a question, that's already a question, right? So I apologize for that. Here I am. I'd like to ask a question. I'll say that. <laughs> um, this was hearsay. I don't remember where I heard it. It was something about, you know, the college kids partying, you know, sort of which was responsible for the spreading of COVID and the police felt like they could not interrupt, they could not address the partying because it was not a neighbor who made a noise complaint. It was people driving by. And did anyone hear anything like this? And this, this felt to me like a, almost like a human rights issue because it meant that our the positivity rates went up and our children could not go to school. Um, and I wondered why the police are so free to, you know, enter, you know, the high density living areas, but are not free to interrupt the college students. And I, and I feel weird introducing this because again, like this, is, this was hearsay. I'm not exactly sure where I heard this information. Did I read it? I just cannot remember. So I'm kind of tossing this out as, did anyone else read this? Did anyone else hear about the reasoning behind why the police did not interrupt the parties? So a um, couple of things. So one, I don't know if people are aware that we now have about 20 COVID ambassadors um, who walk around the different hours and times to help educate people. Although, you know, I, and or, you know, if somebody's not wearing a mask in one of the mask zones to be like, hey, you know, just here's a free mask, you should put it on, you know, and help your neighbor or, you know, help keep the community safe. We also have the COVID hotline where people can call or email us and um, typically there's someone there to answer except for those ones that come in after 10 o'clock, you know, like nine o'clock at night. That's those ones are a little hard, but we do end up sending. So if we get people who complain about a party, like on a Saturday afternoon, we can send the ambassadors out there and then the ambassadors can reach out to the police if they need the backup, although we're hoping that they don't, right? Um, and the police have been responding to people who file noise complaints because then they can charge everyone who is on that lease two to four hundred dollars and that is makes a, a, a you know so it's like twelve hundred dollars per house of you're not supposed to have more than four people in your house that are not related so um and they dismantle the party then right so when they go and they file and then every and and the the party uh dissolves i can't really speak on them not going to places based on you know cars making a noise complaint or cars making a complaint but i it just seems like the best way to go about it is to file a noise complaint which is tricky because it typically has to be in the evening right because there's hours where there can be such so much noise um like during the day and then after nine o'clock that that changes mm -hmm. But I think it, you also have to be a neighbor. You can't just be like a passerby who is alarmed seeing all these college kids. You have yep. to be someone with a vested interest. Yep. And as somebody who answers the COVID hotline, it's, you know, it's understandable where our residents are, how our, or why our residents feel the way that they do, right? Because we've been pretty low numbers and then this occurs and then the numbers um, spike. So it's, Right. And I think that there's an issue with, you know, why didn't you mass be more effective or have a, a, a more discipline than than what they've been doing. And it's like if you if you have them leave school, then they're still here because they're off campus. 
right? And so it's like this, how do, where's the medium, right? Because then we lose all control over them and they're just regular residents and it becomes just straight police issues versus them being school and town issues. Because when they are fined through the town, they get fined through the campus too. I don't know if anybody saw that, how that UMass issued out like 200 citations for party goers, basically. I just, I think I just wondered like where that came from that, you know, cause it, it feels like we all had a vested interest in breaking up that party, not just if you lived oh. nearby, right? If you had kids in the school who were then not able to go to school, if you have a compromised immune system, if, you know what I mean? Like we, we all, we all are breathing the same air, <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know? So oh. I don't know if that like a, just a general civil rights that they have a right to, you know, I just don't know where that comes from that the um, mm -hmm. restrictions about the police being able to respond. Mm -hmm. to I, I, um, yeah. Uh, the noise complaints is the only thing I can really to defer to. I don't really, I didn't hear about neighbors or people driving by with the issues. I mean, I have seen them report it to the COVID hotline and then we send the ambassadors out, right? So I haven't necessarily seen it with the police being involved. So I, I can't speak on that. Okay. So essentially, if you're driving by, call the hotline. Yep. If you live near you, file the noise complaint. Yep. Got that. All right. So does anybody want to make a motion? Right, because we're trying to get out before eight. Is that what we're? <laughs> All right, this is finished. I move that we adjourn the meeting at seven forty-two p.m. Like that. Is there a second? We got. I second that motion. <laughs> oh, who won that? I, I sure what did. Yeah. Whoever. Yeah. Okay, all right, we'll go with yeah. that. Yeah. All right, so all in favor? Yeah. Aye. Aye. Sweet. So we'll see you in the email. See you next meeting. Yep. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. That's right. My bad. Good night, but everybody. I, I, I was going to say, see you all in the email. <laughs> but oh. no. Just, just, just you. <laughs> no. We're not going to violate the email. No. Everybody Good night, stay everyone. safe out there. Stay safe. Uh, yeah, stay yes. safe.